In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use data-driven content in conjunction with your PageFlex templates. Data-driven content provides a host of advantages when developing your templates. Among the benefits of this feature are creating reusable data that can be shared across all of your templates, establishing a pattern for default data, enforcing limits and constraints to your users when having precise data is a concern, eliminating errors and consistency when dealing with larger data sets. Lastly, avoid setting up extremely complex rules and programming in your templates. There are two different ways to add dynamic data to your templates. The first is native system variables. The second are record-driven variables. Let's cover native system variables first. System variables provide a way to use common information about a logged-in user and apply it automatically to a template. Examples of this data might be a user's name, address, phone number, or even email. As you can see on screen, when I loaded this template, it immediately presented the variable fields with my personal details preloaded for me. Let's take a look at what makes this possible. To review, we're going to open up the XML descriptor file for this template and review how it is set up. Note that we're specifying variable names in the inner text value for each variable node. Specifying these values is fairly simple. The variables are cased between two at symbols. In our current iteration, each variable is prefixed with the object type separated with a dot and the variable name. Here is a list of the current available variables. Please note that the user object will be replaced with customer, starting with liftoff 2.0 in late 2018. For additional information on system variables, check out our online documentation that can be found at docs.liftoff.shop. See the link in the description below for easy access. Next, we're going to take a look at using Liftoff's record feature to populate your templates. Before we get into that, let's talk about records for a minute. Think of records as a database in the cloud. You can create any type of table you want and load it with text, images, even files. It can be used to create blogs, like the one you see on our liftoff.shop site. It can be used to create digital asset management tools, like what you see on my screen. Additionally, it can be used to create image repositories, image galleries, data pickers, and other types of dynamic content. For more information about records in general, stay tuned for a complete tutorial over records and the many ways you can implement them. For this example, we're going to show you how you can create a list of addresses and apply those to a PageFlex template. Let's start by creating a new record called Locations. Our objective is to have a user select a location and have it automatically populate a PageFlex template with address variables. First, we'll create a column for the location that will be used to display the value for our selector. Next, let's create a text field for our address. Now, we'll create a field that contains the combination of city, state, and zip. Now that we've created our table, let's upload an Excel spreadsheet that has all of our address information. Note, you can enter all of these by hand. However, using our import tool help makes this much easier to manage. Let's make sure our data is uploaded as expected.
Now, let's take a look at our PageFlux template and make sure it's ready. We're ensuring that we have the variables in place to capture the address and city-state information. Now that we're confident this is in place, let's take a look at our XML descriptor file for our template. Let's start by creating the variable that will serve as our drop-down box on our configuration page. We're creating a variable named location select. We do this by setting the type to record select. Next, we'll apply two attributes, record type and display field. The record type we use must exactly match the name we created when creating the record. In this case, our record name is Locations. The field we want to display to our user is Location Name. Please note that these attributes are case sensitive and must be entered exactly as you see them on screen. In this example, we don't want the user to have to worry about entering address or city-state zip information. So we're going to create two additional variables that will pull the information we need from the select record and place them into hidden fields. For a shortcut, I'm going to copy this first record select variable I created. Note that the attribute record select variable uses the var underscore location select as its source. Location select refers to this variable we created in the step above. Note that we set our type to invisible. This will ensure this field does not show up on our form. Additionally, record field points to the field that we need out of our record that we created earlier in this exercise. In this example, we're pulling both address and city state zip. Let's save our XML and see if it works. Okay, let's test our item. This test does assume that we've already uploaded our PageFlex template back into the Liftoff application. If you haven't done so, please do so now. If we perform the steps correctly, we should have a location dropdown with all of our preset locations. It looks like we did the job correctly, as all of the locations we loaded from our spreadsheet appear to be here. Let's try one out. Excellent! As you can see, the proof is rendering fine, and it is utilizing the variable that we placed in there. If you've performed all these steps correctly, your template should work just like mine. That concludes our tutorial for today. Thank you so much for watching.